I'm recording now, uh, just to let you know that uh, you, can, you can finish up, Barney, you're having with your wife. You did shout at your wife there to shut the door. That's a bit loud, mate. Well, I shouted because I've got headphones in listening to you. And to get over your cacophony of Scottishness, I need to shout. Oh, a cacophony. There's a big word for the start. Co co uh, that's the first uh, little link for his cacophony. Hey, uh, uh, good, to, uh, good to be back. I had a wee bit of uh, personal stuff to deal with last week. So uh, we're back on it today. Welcome to the uh, Total BS uh, podcast mm. with uh, me and... Uh, Paul Stein to everybody. What were, you, what were you doing last week? Was it radio training? Yeah, yeah, I was, uh, I was, I, I, there's a few few issues, Paul, about people not talking over the songs properly. Um, um, okay. and, and as you know, I'm a bit of an expert on that. People, people are sort of talking and then fading up the music again. And then, you know, no, talk all over the song. Forget yeah. this. You know, you they're not listening for the songs. They're listening for the, you. T the bits in them. the middle, the bits in the middle. Talk over Radio Gaga all the yes. way through it. Mm. Um, but I'm still really, I'm so excited because Gordon Ramsay's uh, quiz show was on last night. Gordon Ramsay's bank balance. Oh, fine. Oh, yeah, you've got glasses on today as well. Yeah. You look like, uh, what's that, Joe 90? You do look <laughs> a bit, Joe. you look like Joe 90's been eating pies. Joe 93. Uh, yeah, <laughs> 1993. I uh, know, yeah, uh, so I was very excited because I thought, I've, I've said to you many times, when will they give Gordon Ramsay a quiz show? Yeah. And finally, they have. Yeah, and it was utter bollocks uh, to uh, use his <laughs> words. Well, did he, did he, I didn't, well, I saw a bit of it, to be fair, and I thought, I oh, know, it, it was complicated. And I see a lot of people tweeting today that it really is a complicated quiz show and a ripoff of the million pound drop and I, I, the, my problem with it is i don't have a problem with gordon ramsay because i like him we're, we're currently watching binge watching all the hell's kitchens uh, in america so i think we're on to series 10 from about eight years ago uh, they're all the same uh, but at least they're more entertaining than last night's quiz uh, <sighs> i i think the bbc will be better off bringing back something like it's a knockout. Ooh, Getting crap. people on greasy poles. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? What? It's a knockout? Well, not with the original presenters, obviously. No. Um, mm. But bring it back. You know, get, I don't know, Claudia Winkleman, whatever she does with a fringe. Get her doing it. People on greasy poles, others throwing cabbages at mm -hmm. them. Good old fashioned family fun. We could, a fraction of the cost, because I bet that cost a fortune, because Gordon's not doing it for uh, nothing, is he? He's, nice. he's got the shingles. Oh, and, you know, yeah. so, so, you know, fraction of the cost. You could use all the swimming pools that we're not using at the minute. Get people in there. Yeah. You know, get the poles out in the water, off the diving board, all sorts of games. Uh, you know, all the crowd have got high powered water pistols and then you play your joker, somebody comes in with a fire hose just to knock them senseless. Um, you know, has, it been a, has it been a long week, mate? <laughs> I think that'd be good family fun. And it yeah. costs nothing, it pennies. You know, I, I quite liked that uh, Total Wipeout. That was brilliant. I quite liked the well, Total Wipeout. That's it, on that theme, but much cheaper. And you do what It's a Knockout did. You'd have Grimsby up against Cleethorpe. Yes. Peterborough up against Cambridge. You know, real intense dislike of each other. Because you know, nice. people in Peterborough hate Cambridge people. Oh, wow, that's, uh, that's broad. I thought we're all coming together under the... No, uh, no, the, no, 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 the, no, no. No? I thought no. that was the idea we decided no. that we've had a rough a rough time. No, Let's... no, no, no. You you won't find anybody in Peterborough cycling wearing a cravat. No, they'll be having a fag and swigging from a can of Stella. I Total opposites. Mm. I used to have a cravat in the RAF. Um, it was actually to stop snake bites. Uh, really? Well, I was short, you see, and uh, the snakes could get up there. So we used to wear these protected cravats. Uh, which was lovely. Um, so yeah, so I, I I'm going to give it a I'm going to write to Tim Davy, the new boss. Uh, you, I know you've been correspondence with him. Um, yes, I I'm have. Go, I've got. <laughs> I'm going to write. I'm going to write to uh, Tim and congratulate him uh, for this. Is, I think this is one of the first shows that have come out with his stamp on them, and he'll be chuffed. Did, well, uh, and you still talk about his stamp because there's some sort of internal report today saying that, I don't know, 90% of people who work for the BBC in the future have got to be black, one-legged, lesbian tourists. Uh, so I don't think you fit into the category, mate. 
Oh, well, you see, I've always, I've been up against it all my life. And I've actually, yeah. to be fair, I've quite liked being up against it all my life. Um, <laughs> but, you know, but, but the BBC are forging for, I'm just looking forward to the next show that Tim Day, Davey clearly He's mates with Gordon. Good on you. Good on you. Yeah, Keep it going. Yeah. Keep yeah. it going. Well, Rishi, Rishi Sunak's good mates with Gordon as well, didn't he? he had a little chat with him. Oh, yeah. So, what's it been like? Back. It, well, I, I always think that, you know, if you're, if you're a, you know, a politician uh, who's looking to communicate with, you know, the public yeah. and, you know, understand the pressures yeah. that, you know, small businesses are under, there's nothing better than talking to a multi, multi-millionaire who's got about... 50 houses and never had a problem for the last 30 years. That's you see, the way to you go. see I, I detect that hint of cynicism. I detect mm-hmm. that in you. Uh, and I don't like it. You know, this is a man who's gone Tough from shit. nothing. Mm-hmm. Eh? He's gone Tough from shit. nothing. Yeah, but it's aspirational. It's aspirational. We should look at Gordon Ramsay and think, right, I can run restaurants and I can have my own quiz show. And you you do this, you denigrate it all the time. I don't like it, Paul. I don't like it. Well, I, you know, I can swear like Gordon. I mean, that, that's what he does, isn't it? Swear at people, shout at people. But he is an inspiring person. But he's no idea what it's like to run a little backseat, backseat garage, you know, with no help from the government for three years because you pay yourself by dividends. No, mm. no idea at all. Ooh. Anyway, listen, listen. Uh, the roadmap came out this week, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Uh, thank goodness for that. I need a roadmap. Would you like me to go through it and give it my perspective? Yes, please. Thank okay. you. So here we go. <clears throat> so Boris's roadmap. Um, it, the new roadmap. Just, just so you're clear here. It replaces a previous design that sort of skirted around the main problems using a ring road, uh, and via a set of U-turns. Uh, led everyone into a cul-de-sac. So it's good that we've got a replacement for that. So the roadmap, as I see it, will eventually allow us to have a pint outside in April. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If yeah. we can find a pub that hasn't shuttered its windows and sold off all its nuts, of course. Uh, the roadmap could potentially lead to fans going to football matches only after the season has ended, though. Yeah. Uh, audiences could return to theatres too, by the looks of it, even though they've all gone out of business. And foreign holidays might be back, Ronnie, if there are any airlines still in business to fly you anywhere soon. So that's my little synopsis of Boris's roadmap. Well, that's so. that's lovely. Um, and, it's, it's, and what you've picked up on very nicely, how forward-thinking they are, aren't they? Because oh. um, mm. I saw, well, forward-thinking, but then that blokey bloke, uh, the uh, vaccination uh, minister, mm. uh, you know, he was on the other day and... I think he was getting mixed up with these dates because he must have a lot of dates. You know, he's running running the vaccination. But he started talking about March being after April, if I remember <laughs> rightly. Can you, can you explain a bit more to that for me, Paul? Well, he, 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 this is what he said, and I quote, unquote, on the 8th of March, which is three weeks after the middle of April, where we will have offered the vaccine to all over 50s, we will see schools reopening. I, I just, I don't understand how he gets March after April. And it really, you know, worried me. It, it, it worried me to my core. Right, yeah. Oh, yeah, and your core, man. Yeah, wow, yeah you got massive strong. core. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I thought April came after March, and I, and then it got me thinking, maybe, maybe I've been wrong all along. Maybe April does come before March, you know, maybe. Yeah. And it led me to question everything, Ronnie. Maybe yeah. I doesn't come, you know, maybe, maybe I doesn't come before E after C. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is a bird in the hand worth two in the bush? And if I ask no questions, well, I hear no lies, you know. And I've shun, you know, on top of it, I've shunned Greek people for years. I, I shun people from Greece, especially those who offer presents. So maybe I've been wrong all these years. Maybe, you know, old Nadim has been right and I've been wrong. Yeah, well, listen, um, fake, fake dates. Fake dates. That's a, uh, I think, um, you know, we've been living off this uh, calendar thing. Uh, is, it, is it gregarious or one of the calendar things? Yeah. Yeah, you know, maybe that's, maybe the, uh, the government was saying, no, no, let's not bother with calendars anymore because they're not wrong. They're not what we want. And mm. I think that's just a wee hint there. Hey, listen, um, do you want to hear about urine? Oh, yes, please. Okay, well, I'll tell you about your urine. Let me tell you this. Um, a meat uh, meal kit delivery firm, Hello Fresh. We tried to get them as sponsors, Paul, but they weren't interested. Um, no. Because the material we use is hardly fresh. Um, but um, Hello Fresh apologizes after a customer was sent a Coca Cola bottle full of urine with his food order. Now, you know, well, I know it maybe not what is ideal, but at least he got it. 
And it was well, delivered oh, all bear, the time. Bear grills, bear grills, you know, big family line. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, well, when I was in the uh, SAS, we were taught how to drink other people's urine, not your own, um, <clears throat> to, to keep alive, Paul, to keep alive mm. in the, in the, under the bivouac. So um, how did this happen? How did this man get this bottle of urine? Because he's supposed to have the iced tea. Obviously, the two look similar, don't they? But, you know. Yeah, um, well, I think it's maybe somebody's been working very, very hard and mm-hmm. tried to get this guy's order out, realised he was really rushed and just had a jimmy. Mind you, I've never been able to pee into the uh, the top of a Coca-Cola bottle, have <laughs> you? Not, well, only with the funnel. Yeah, yeah. But you see, it's the same with those little samples you get when you go for the doctors. They're tiny, yeah. aren't they? How do you get your whole thing in there? You know, keep you know I, 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 I have an issue as well uh, sometimes in, in public toilets. You know, I, I, I get a bit nervous. Yes, yes, I know what you mean. I, so, mm. I, I, I hate the splash as well. You know, when you get the big boys next to you and they, <laughs> and they, and they, they stand back and they really like to clean the urinal and you get splashed. I gave a guy yeah. a look the other day. I looked him straight in his chest. I said, pack that in, mate. Just pack it in. The, I'm the, guys, it. the guys that stand in the disabled toilet and try and hit it from 20 feet yeah. away. Yeah. No, no good. No good. But we used to do that at school. You see how high you can pee? Yeah. These were good. good. Oh. And, and this, this goes back to summer schools, by the way, because the government's on about summer schools, aren't they, for yes. kids? How do you feel about uh, that? Well, I, I don't think it's good. I, 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 kids have had enough time being bored, sat at home doing lessons, and I know they've got to catch up, but they'd be better off teaching them games like that, like who can we highest? You know, let the kids go and have some fun this summer. Instead of lessons, teachers should take them to the park or the countryside, give them bow and arrows and butterfly nets and bits of rope and old car tires, confiscate the bones, you really confiscate have, the tablets. You've really been on it this week. You mm. really have, obviously, yeah. Uh, You've Kids need nice to week. play. They need to go out in the summer and hurt themselves. Go strawberry picking, apple borrowing, knock door run. Do all that. You know, I see in the old days we used to pick up coal. That was with fun. Off the back of lorries, just pick up coal and take it back home. And then we'd go to the big sort of uh, coal, old coal mounds. We called them bings and we'd bring back coal for that. Yeah. They, were, they were great days, happy days. Oh, but how hey. many pieces could you carry? Oh, I didn't carry them. My big sister did. You know, she ah, was, right, yeah. I was Put them in the, a bra. I was a prized one. I did. <laughs> Colin the bra. Is that where she kept them? Colin the bra. Or nutty slack. Colin. <laughs> Colin. I like Colin. a bit of nutty slack. Yeah. Where did that come from? Where did nutty slack come from? Was that a comedy show that did nutty slack? No, no. He was a fellow born in Rotherham. All right. Nice one. Um, mm. do, do you also want to hear about uh, the... Scientists, uh, these are biologists or uh, birdie people, get very mm. excited because they thought they'd discovered a brand new species of orange seagull, right? They thought it's a, bit of a bit of an odd color for a seagull, isn't yes, it? Yes, exactly. Blend in with the white cliffs of Dover, are they? Exactly. They were very, very excited about this. They and they, they did the test and everything. Turns out, um, the seagull had been uh, diving into a big pot of curry sauce from a chippy. Mm. And it turned its skin. What are you doing with the glasses? What's Sorry this? about that. Sorry, um, it, t- it turned the uh, it turned the feathers orange. Wow! And so it was curry sauce. I've wondered about that. When you spill curry on your fingers, it takes a wee while to get it off, isn't it? It's like, mm. can I, mm, that's it. So anyway, I, I just wanted to clear that up because of a few people, a few hornithologists, uh, the hornithologists um, who listen to us, uh, good. So it wasn't a, a new species of seagull, it was a curried seagull. Are all phologists horny? Yeah. All uh, oh, right, that's interesting yeah, yeah. that, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, curry sauce though, you know, for me, I've rediscovered curry sauce recently. Because yeah, I saw you tweeting about that, yes. A, a little treat that I used to have as a, as a cause as a kid, my mum used to give me money for, for school dinners. School's a big theme today on the show. Anyway, so school dinners, you know, were crap, you know, rubbish but you get two pound a day. Now school dinners were almost two pound a day. So you had no change, but if you sneaked out and went to the chip shop for lunch and you got curry and chips, it was one pound 40. So that gave you an extra 60 pence to spend on monkey nuts and Mars bars. So that's what we used to have. I'd forgotten about chips and curry sauce until recently. And one of our little treats um, is to go to the chippy for lunch and get a bag of chips 
with curry sauce. That's how far we've dropped the bar mm -hmm. in excitement. Mm -hmm. uh, we, in fact, we did it yesterday. We went and all had a bag of chips, and I've rediscovered the chips with the curry sauce, and it's beautiful. Yeah. But you're right, doesn't do you any good. No, no, it doesn't. Um, how do you feel then about Pretty Patel? No, thanks. Uh, Pretty Patel uh, discovered that um, these uh, asylum seekers that are held in a barracks called Napier, which I think is in Essex or Kent, but there were 200 of them tested positive for the COVID. Uh, uh, bless them. Um, but it turns out they've been breaking the rules, Paul. They've been breaking oh. the rules because there are 28 people in a room, um, two metre distancing with a sheet in between the beds. <laughs> a sheet? Y yes. <laughs> She didn't Not a bamboo, they'd be better off with a bamboo curtain, wouldn't they? <laughs> yeah, uh, but you know, a pretty, she, she's, she's, that's why she's doing the old, she loves the yeah. police, police work. She just went, what's going on here? What's going on? And she went, ah, oh, there it is. They're not sticking to the rules. They're probably looking through the, the and, and they've picked up the COVID because they're not adhering to the sheets. Yeah. In fact, Probably that's it. So well done. She's smart cookie pretty to Patel. I know you have a, 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 your thoughts about her, but I think, how did, how did she get to that point? 28 people in a room, a 200 people test positive. It's their fault. Mm. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And, it and, and it's, 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 it's their fault. You know, the, 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 <sighs> The whole world's in a mess. It's it's blame it on the migrants, you know. Blame it on people looking for somewhere safe to live and yes. not get shot at every day. You know, yes. it's their fault. Now, you listen, talk, talking to the police. Oh yes, nice, nice. Talking. The, the, you, you, the police, you, you know the uh, listeners love you when you do this. They love us talking of oh, the the radio links. <laughs> they did. Go, yeah, go on. <clears throat> Talking of the police, I don't know if you've seen this this week, Ronnie, but there's been an official statement put out by the police uh, and um, they, they've had to pour cold water on a planned dogging meetup of up to 25,000 people. Uh, warning that our fresco sex encounters do in fact breach COVID rules. Now, the uh, advice was issued by Essex police after an event for the car-based hookups uh, was trailed online this weekend. I love how this has been written. Uh, it's in the Canvey Island Express or something. Uh, a dogging website publicised the plans uh, for Canvey Island in a post seen by 25,000 dogging enthusiasts. Uh, and the council have had to, uh, and the police have had to come out and say, look, don't drive to the area. Don't take part in this. It's against lockdown rules. Officers have even confirmed they will be patrolling to make sure it doesn't happen. Right. So, uh, uh, yeah, who, I wonder which officers are going to get that gig. Um, so will there be a special department? That, they must have an operational name for that as well. Well, Operate. the police do have a dogging department, don't yeah. they? Yeah, I, I've yeah. seen it. The, yeah, the, me it's, too. It's, yes. got cars with it written on the side. Yeah. yeah. Dogging patrol. Yeah, that's brilliant. Well, you know, I think there's a wee bit of civil liberties involved here, Paul. You know, I know it's a breakdown, <laughs> but if people like a bit of dogging, you know, come on. You know, it, I don't know about you. I've, I've only tried it three or four times. Uh, uh, um, um, I can't remember anything about it. Um, but, you know, it was, I met some interesting people. I didn't meet anybody. Um, I just heard them. But, um, but it was, well, you know... What? There's a there's a problem here because the the website that these people have been going to is called Let's Go Dogging, <laughs> and um, <laughs> oh, I kid you not, <laughs> and a lot of people are going on that website and misinterpreting it. You know, yes. they're thinking that's the place where you go and talk to people about your retrievers and yeah, your spaniels. Yeah, and your cockers, and um, and yeah. and it's not it's not the place to talk about your cockers. <laughs> Hey, listen. No, um, listen. No, 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 oh, seriously. No. Oh, there's seriously. more. Hang on. This, yeah, because the Let's Go Dogging website um, is close to the Let's Go Digging website. And, and Let's Go Digging... <laughs> and Let's Go Digging uh, have complained. Uh, because, uh, <laughs> you know, in the past, because people have been clicking on the wrong thing, um, Let's Go Digging... Uh, has been has been bombarded by scantily clad people turning up at their rural excavations and the strange objects that they attempt to dig with. So uh, if you are clicking on "Let's Go Dogging," be careful you don't type in "Let's Go Digging." Go digging, yeah, because well, that's causing problems for the excavation. I think I think they're missing a chance at a nice little tie-up. 
In fact, I think that's what happens a lot, isn't it? Um, hey, listen, talking yes. of uh, good news, um, mm. Paul, um, we've had more people interested in sponsorship. Um, oh, good, good. And I know you're a big, uh, okay, I don't do the marketing thing, so I'm going to run this past you, see what you think. Oops, yeah. is, that, is that your emails or mine? That is my emails. I normally yeah. turn them off. Yeah. Um, but What's going um, on I've, I've forgotten. Yeah. Anyway, well, fair, laissez fair approach, and I apologize for it. Uh, very excited about this one. Uh, it's a brand new estate agency specializing in apartments for uh, kind of yuppies and things like that. It's based in Fenland, Paul. Um, mm. and, it's, and it's kind of, you know, these one bedroom apartments. Yuppies in Fenland. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's called uh, Fenny Pads. What do you think? Is that, is that something you'd be interested in? Uh, well, I, I I I can't imagine many yuppies in Finland uh, taking you up on this. I think they may have um, not looked at the criteria of who lives in Finland. Uh, yeah. But fanny pads, you know, you know, as as a as a last resort, um, yeah. fanny pad fanny pads are, could be quite useful. I think you know okay. to, to, to bail people out. That's possible. Um, uh, mm. What about a new dermatological uh, cream? Uh, it's actually it's a, a big giant uh, that make these things. Uh, it specialises mm. in cream for men. It's called Four when Skin. You say a, what? When you say a big giant makes these things, what, yeah, in big, the sky? Yeah. Um, you but it's come up a green stock can, to go Can and I get just them? do the punch? <laughs> can I just do the f punch? It's called four, four no, it's not called four, it's called four skins. Well done. You just disrupted the punchline. Oh, yeah. Well, we, it was certainly worth it when we got there. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, what about the perfect, perfect accompaniment for your cheese? I know you like cheese, Paul. What mm, about uh, Butts Crackers? Uh, they're oh. coming in Chatteris, up Chatteris. They're interested in doing that. That's right up my back alley, that. Yeah. Uh, a couple more here. Um, I know you suffer very badly with hemorrhoids. You don't talk about it much. Um, no, no, no. So you could do, really do with the ultimate treatment, uh, pile driver. Uh, it's a, <laughs> some kind of anaesthetic cream that you can use. Are you interested? Uh, well, anything that, that allows me to sit down correctly without a large cushion. And finally, I think this is the one I think you'll love. Uh, oh, and yeah. so, and two words, and Summers. Uh, they've come up with, uh, <laughs> they've come up with the spring range of things that they're going to put out you know, to get everybody in the spring thing with the the, yeah. uh, the flowers and everything going and they, they, yeah, anyway um procreating yeah, yeah that whole thing uh they've advertised they want us to advertise their uh and we'll be the first to advertise uh they're launching this uh, spring called daffodildos um <laughs> now i think i think uh. there's, there's opportunity there apparently they're very nice a kind of yellow thing going on with a kind yeah, of green, yeah. green um what do you think are you interested in daffodildos Will it be shaped like a daffodil? I don't know, Paul. I, I, I didn't get into well, it. Uh, sort of protruding. I, I think the protruding nature of a daffodil's uh, flower, uh, you know, in plastic or rubber. I don't, I, I don't think we need to go into uh, the details. We're only going to be the voice of it. We don't. Yeah, know. but I don't want to be associated with something that's going to cause internal injuries. Well, I don't think it is. It's, a, it's daffodil, <laughs> daffodil does. They don't know. If you do, are, they, anyway. are they only available January to, to March? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I'm up for that then. I'm okay. up for that. Hey, I'll listen, get to I, I, yeah, please do. Did, did you see the news this week with NASA landing on Mars? Everybody getting really excited about the red planet and the rover and the parachutes and the, the film. Did you see all that? Yeah. The only thing that gets me about Mars is I get hungry. I just think of a Mars bar. Do you? <laughs> that's all I think about. Fried or unfried? I'll take it anyway. Well, yeah, I've heard that. <laughs> uh, but anyway, <laughs> a lot of ballyhoo. But I, I think I, I may have been the only one, judging by my Twitter feed, I may have been the only one uh, who thought the surface of Mars was a bit... Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Ooh, that would have upset a lot of people. Well, listen, we've spent all this money, all this time, getting these rovers to Mars. Yes. And they've, they've, they've filmed some barren desert with some some red sand you no, know no no you see this is you're you're not really a scientist no we're cathedrals no block of flats no, 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 no nightclubs no, no, yeah. no beach no but they're hills. trying to to trying to find out if it's a place we could go and live yeah you know when we because you know the global warming and yeah, but know, i'm not interested there's nothing there I, i'm not going to build everything let's wait till we've got some holiday homes sorted in a swimming pool you know yeah. I, you know, there's not even a bar 
Have you ever been? Well, to who's Sw- going to go there? Have you ever been to Swindon? Uh, I have been to Swindon and yeah. Kilmarnock. Yeah. Mm. Uh, wee bit, not Kilmarnock. Kilmarnock's a beautiful place. Oh. But but so you're not you you don't like the uh, the idea of again aspirational people trying to find new civilizations. You don't never bother. watched that great documentary Star Trek, right? <laughs> documentary, documentary. But the, the, the only reason I used to watch Star Trek was to see which person from the Starship Enterprise was going to get killed this week who hadn't previously appeared. So you used to wait until yes. they went down to the planet. Yeah. You know, and sometimes it'd be Bones would go yeah. and Captain Kirk and somebody from engineering you'd yes. never seen before. Yeah. You knew which one was going to get it. It was just, a, we used to play, you know, the lottery. So you'd wait and see, you know, when when's the alien going to kill that person? It's a, like, before. it's a bit like watching Casualty when you see somebody has, hasn't taken their diabetes yeah. in, you know, the <clears throat> injection and they go and try and clean uh, a guttering. With a lad, and you mm. think oh, that you're number one, then you're going to be number yeah. one. And yeah. um, but 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 yeah, the one I used to like in uh, Star Trek was a hurra 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 hurra. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. She she just used to sit there and she go, oh, oh yeah, yeah. communications. Yeah. I loved uh, she she her communications were fantastic. You know, I just used to love uh, her uh, the way she could uh, use her uh, communications. Anyway, well, the way she twiddled her knobs is what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I was at that age, and it was a great documentary. So, all right, so we're going to put you down as some kind of Luddite. You're not interested in, in advancing the, the civilization. Because... No, 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 no. I am. Just go somewhere exciting. You know, it's boring. Mars is dull. You spent all that money, you know. Go somewhere else. Go to Jupiter. Let's have a look at the rings. Um, was that Saturn? Saturn, I remember Saturn. Uh, yeah. Listen, uh, can, can I give you two words? Yeah. Anthea. Who are you looking at there? Who you, eh? Who well, was the, wife's, the wife's outside doing something she's never done before, right? Cooking. She's re, no, well, that, <laughs> no, I don't want to do that. <clears throat> no, she's, she's repointing a wall. Wow. Now, I have to ask myself this question. Yeah. Will I be going out there on Saturday and redoing the whole thing, or can oh. I trust her and leave her to it? Oh, you're such a sexist. Your wife's mm. probably looked at YouTube's, and 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 she's gone. I can yeah. do the pointing. Mm. What? What? How do you? How do you do the pointing? What? What does pointing do then? Well, by the looks of it, I'm just had a quick look out the window. You throw the stuff from about 15 yards at the wall, and splatter it all over. <laughs> then you sort of s- scrape it a bit. Right. Well, at least that's I, my wife's technique. That, that kind of reminds me of the dogging as well. Um, Does it? Right. Yeah. Anyway, Which, Anthea yeah. Turner. Turner. Mm. You're She's got me worried. <clears throat> She's got me a bit worried. I don't know if you saw this week. She's 60 years, Anthea. Uh, bless her. Uh, she had a party for five pals, uh, and they had a bit of a... A bit of a pamper party at a flat, you know, did the nails, did the feet, did the hair, eyebrows, ear hair, had it all done, <clears throat> got it all out and everything. Um, and the gathering is said to have happened hours after she tweeted a cartoon of an overweight woman. I don't know if you saw that. She oh, yes. The- oh, yes. <clears throat> oh, I did see this. Yeah. Uh, so she's she's broken lockdown rules. You know, she's saying strange things. So it's, it's worried me uh, about Anthea. And she's not, I don't know if you've seen this, Ronnie, uh, but she's not the only TV star to flout lockdown rules this week. Um, is, is, is this it? What? Is this it? Well, it could be. Um, David Jason, uh, you know, yeah. star of... Only Fools and Horses. And, and National you know. Treasure, yes. Yes, uh, open all hours, all that. Well, apparently he's been breaking the rules too, Ronnie. Yeah. Um, the former Only Fools and Horses uh, star, he shuns his star status these days. What's the matter with you? <laughs> I, I don't know if you know this. It's this like, this like building a great big comedy wall, brick by brick. Go on, go on. But these days, David Jason shuns his star status. <laughs> yes, does he? he should, yeah. yeah. I don't know if you know this. <laughs> We're off again. Right. Come on. on. Come on. But um, 
uh, <laughs> recently is taken <laughs> he's taken to living in a camper van in Merthyr Tidville with a dog called Shingles. <laughs> Uh -huh. Just to avoid the stardom, you know, <laughs> yes, people, you know, shouting oi oi across the road at him. Um, so he's living in this camper van, uh, but he's frequently broken lockdown rules, Ronnie, by cruising around Wales in his camper van, uh, mm -hmm. taking in the dramatic scenery and talking to sheep. Uh, he just can't help himself. Apparently, he loves Wales, um, but he's also started his own little business from the camper van. And that wherever he stops in all the laybys, he attaches an awning to the side, which he got on eBay for a fiver, uh, and, and he sells oranges. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Jason's oranges. And uh, it's a good little business, apparently. He doesn't sell apples, Ronnie. No, it's just oranges. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No pears. No. Oranges. No grapes. He, he loves just, an orange. He loves just an orange. Oranges. Oh, and his own brand of chewing gum, lovely jubbly bubbly. Brilliant. That's great. Lovely jubbly bubbly. Great. <laughs> there you go. Can we just can we just hey? can we just like CSI that for a second? <laughs> so we yeah? we went to Wheels. Mm. Uh, uh, Merthyr Tidville, to be precise, which is a right crap hole. Mm. Oranges, uh, yawnings. Uh, Jason's oranges. I don't know if you got that. Jason's yeah, oranges. oranges. Um, Jason okay. orange. And then mm. the, you actually had the punchline of he does like Jason's lovely jubbly. No, 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 no. He, he only sells oranges. Oh, and his new brand of chewing gum, lovely jubbly bubbly. But what are the oranges about? Well, I just wanted to crack a gag about Jason Orange. Oh, right. Jason's so Oranges. J Jason's it's a play on words, Ronnie. I don't know if you've yeah. heard of him. Mm. Right. Is he from... Uh, is he, oh, talking of... Uh, that. Was that. Mm. Um, talking mm. of... Uh, festivals will be opening up this uh, summer. Oh. oh. Yeah, it's what you got. I'm hoping to see this. I haven't seen them live. Uh, and I'm, I'm, fingers crossed, said to Mrs. Barber, if the Hollies are at uh, Reading this year, we're yeah. going. We're not Peter, Paul going. and Mary in Leeds. Come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. And Mary Hopkins... Hey, uh, Mary Hopkins, those were the, that's what we want. We want contemporary artists back on the stages and keep us amused. Sweet. Let's get yeah. the sweet back Middle of there. the road, chirp. Uh, Where's uh, your mama gone? Where's your mama mom, gone? Pickety yeah. witch. Pickety witch. That's them. The Mandy tremors. Morton. Mandy Morton. Oh, Mandy Morton. Oh, great to get Mandy and, and another group and... And maybe Johnny D maybe uh, appeared at this time because he's been doing a lot of concerts. Talking of music, Daft Punk have split up this week, yeah. Ronnie. I don't know if you you've want, seen that. Would you like some Daft Punk? Shall I get you some Daft yes, Punk? Yes, please. I, I love think. a bit of Daft Punk. Like Harder, faster, it. stronger, better. I love that song. Uh, yeah, da Daft One Punk. more time. You want Any... one more time? Yeah, okay. One more time. Let's see if we can get the... Uh, one... Oh, yeah, here we go. Come on. So yeah. just such a great band. Love them. Yeah. Defunk. Round Can you hear that? World, around the world. No, I can't. All oh, right. Anyway, well, I've got Daft Punk playing under you at the moment. Well, it sounds brilliant. What? <laughs> but but the thing is with Daft Punk. <clears throat> what? They wore cr Daft hey? Punk. Dear God. I what? Can't, I can't. I can't work with this. I can't. I can't. Work. I'm Hang off on. to point the wall. In what? A what are you saying? I can't <clears throat> hear for Daft Punk. I'm okay. saying Daft Punk oh, used to wear what? What? Speak up, man. What? I can't hear you. You wanted Daft Punk. I couldn't get you to hear it, though. I don't understand what's going on with the technicals at the moment. So what? Uh, what's up? Daft Punk, of course, used to wear crash helmets, didn't they? Yeah. So you wouldn't even know if they'd split up, would you? I mean, no. you would. <clears throat> they could be anybody underneath yeah. those helmets, isn't it? It, yeah. it, it could, well, apart from you, because you're too small. But, you know, Standard, uh, people of normal height could have been in Daft Punk. It's like saying the banana splits have packed up. I mean, who was in those costumes? Nobody would know. You know, or the Wombles are not wombling free anymore. I mean, you could go down the pub, couldn't you, and say, oh, yeah, all right, mate. Yeah, party lager. Yeah. What do you do for a living? Oh, well, mate, I used to be a Womble, you know. Yeah, I was inside a Wombles. Anybody could say it, you know. All you got to say you, is it's really hot and a bit... Weren't you the person that inspired the uh, Teletubbies? Oh, that's correct. Yeah. yeah. 
they, you know, it was one of your publicity shots and somebody from a TV said, I'll tell you what, what about some characters that look a bit weird and they're a wee bit overweight? How's that doing? Yeah, tell it Thank you. Mind. Well, you. you get the point. Anybody could be these characters, couldn't they? Pretending you're a wombo. Pretending, pretending you're, you're a, a wombo. You know, anybody could. But it, it, it did get me thinking, Ronnie, yes. of mis, misheard lyrics. Because, you know, that punks get lucky. Yeah. Uh, up on that to get lucky. Up okay. on that to get, up on that to get, up on that to get lucky. lucky. Well, there's, there's a bit towards the end of that where it, it sounds like he's singing... A rubber Mexican lucky, a rubber Mexican lucky, okay. rubber Mexican lucky. So it's inspired a new game for you. Are you up for a new game? Oh, I like these. Yeah, I like a game. Okay. Inspired by Daft Punk and misheard lyrics, welcome to the new game for Ronnie called Word. Nice. Word. Word. Just imagine, Word. Listeners, just imagine listeners, you've got some echo there as well. Word, yeah. word, word, word. Yeah. Mm. so basically this is misheard lyrics can you name the song from the misheard lyrics i'm going to give you are Go you ready ahead. yes okay number one on word nice number one i remove umbilicals i remove umbilicals i remember you i, I, I remove umbilicals i remove umbilicals I remove umbilicals. I am. Where are you from? You sexy thing. Hey! I well remove. Done. I, yes, I remove umbilicals. Umbilicals. Nice. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Are you ready for number two on yes, please. Word? Yes. Here we go. Okay. Kicking your cat all over the place. Kicking your cat. Kicking your cat yes. all over the place. Kicking your cat all over the place. Oh yes, I I, I know. That. Oh, kicking your yeah. cat. kicking your cat all over. Oh yeah, dun, dun, dun. kicking your cat all over the place. We will, we will rock you. Yeah. Rock you. Yes, 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 yes. Two, two out of two, my friend. All right, here we go. Number three on word. Word. Uh, <clears throat> thanks. Um, let's pee in the corner. Let's pee. In the spotlight. Let's be in the corner. Let's that's be me, in that's, the corner. That's be in the corner. That's me in the spotlight. Yeah, that's Let, um, yeah. Um, um, uh, let's be in the corner. corner. Let's be in the spot. Light. Light. Yes. Um. It's uh. They they uh, they, they did um. Oh, <laughs> God, I can't. Oh, you used to have to play it all the time. Come on. Oh, uh, they, uh, they, uh, they were, uh, yeah, the guy with the bald head is the lead singer. That's him. Yeah, yeah Michael yeah. Stipe. Stipe, mm. yeah, yeah. The Stipeys. It's the Stipe ends. Yeah, the Stipe ends. R-E-M. 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 Yeah, R-E-M. but you did well there, mate. Two out of three. Low round of applause, I think, for uh, Thank word. You very much. Did you make these up yourself or is um a, a, a website you went to? I stole them off the internet, yeah. Oh, okay, that's fine. Mm. I mm. to it's called right. research, isn't it, for most young journalists these days? Oh, nice one. Um, I haven't had time to do this. Uh, Sweet Lover Wins Free Mints for Life. I haven't done that one. I haven't done uh, The Missing Links. Maximum Strength Antiperspirant. Apparently, it only needs to be applied once a week. Thinking of you. Yeah. Uh, on the plus side, if you're struggling to get any time alone while well, locked up with your family, this is probably what you should do. So yeah, there's so get... much content we've not managed to put in. I, I had some Tiger Woods jokes I wanted to crack. Um, I wanted to talk about interior decoration because Brian Parker, you know Brian. Yeah, yeah, well, Brian. Portly, balding chap. Uh, he, he claimed he lost his hair due to wood chip wallpaper. Don't know what that's about. Uh, didn't I get lost to my hair to, to wood chip, chip wallpaper. wallpaper. I um, put so, a cherry on an asteroid. So the content we've not used, should we pass that on to these young producers? Should we yeah, them? yeah, yeah, yeah. Let them, let them, because we've, we've, we've got too much. It's, it's good to be altruistic in, in terms of content, Paul. And, yeah. and, and let's bring the future on. Embrace, oh, you don't like the future, but embrace no. the future. Let's yeah. embrace it. And, and thank everybody for listening to this again. Thanks. Um, thanks again. And uh, you can always leave us a massage or leave him a thing on the, uh, the interweb thingy. Um, uh, listen, I, I, thank you for uh, really thank you for listening. And I know from all the lovely messages we've had over the last few weeks from people that we do make people smile, we do brighten their day. And you know, if if as I said before, if we brighten one person's day and make them smile once, that's oh, enough for me. God, 
Yeah. I've got to go, mate. I've got to go. I'm going to put a crash helmet on and walk down the street and pretend to be Daft Punk. Listen, we've got to do this for another six bloody weeks. Before I do that, mate, I've got to point that wall properly. I've got to go out there and and rescue her. (laughs) Good luck.